What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with the next video in my Hackintosh hardware series. Today we'll be looking at the P9 X79 Pro from ASUS. This is a motherboard that features the X79 chipset and uses socket 2011 processors. Needless to say, this motherboard is for people looking to get the most performance possible out of a single CPU system. Aside from the CPU sockets and chipset, let's dive into the other features of this motherboard. You'll notice that there's 8 memory slots on this board. This is another area in which the X79 platform really shines. This particular board can handle a maximum of 64GB of quad channel memory, which is far more than the standard user will need. However, for heavy content producers or the avid virtual machine users, this is a very nice feature. In terms of PCI slots, there are 4 PCI Express 3.0x16 slots and 2 PCI x1 slots. The PCI Express slots can run single and dual GPU configurations at 16 channel or triple GPU setups at 1 16 channel and the other two at 8 channel. For audio, this board uses the Realtek ALC898 audio chipset. Although this chipset is supported in OS X, I had to edit my own DSDT to get the audio working. Feel free to check out my tutorial for this by clicking the link in the video description. For the SATA ports, we have 8 on board, 4 SATA 2 and 4 SATA 3. These ports work the way you'd think, but the ASUS board packs SSD caching on the last two 3.0 ports. This will allow for faster performance out of traditional hard drives by allowing some of the data to be cached to the SSD. If you don't wish to use the caching, these ports function as normal SATA 3 ports as well. Now let's have a look at the rear I.O. This board features four USB 2.0 ports, a BIOS flashback button, two USB 3.0 ports, a standard Ethernet jack, optical audio, two eSATA ports, two more USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports, a Bluetooth receiver, as well as the traditional audio outputs. Although the rear I.O. features a lot of ports, not all of them work with OS X. I found that all of the USB 2.0 ports worked with all USB 2.0 and 3.0 devices, yet I couldn't get the USB 3.0 ports to read any 2.0 or 3.0 devices. This is due to the fact that this is a Sandy Bridge processor and doesn't have an integrated USB 3.0 controller. If USB 3.0 is a big deal for you, you may want to consider an Ivy Bridge Z77 build instead. It's also worth mentioning that the built-in Bluetooth receiver doesn't work in OS X. You'll need a different solution to have Bluetooth connectivity. Getting away from the main features of this board, there's also a lot of nice smaller things about this board, such as three USB 2.0 headers, onboard power and reset buttons, TPU and EPU for helping regulate voltages, especially when overclocking, loads of fan headers, and quite a bit more. Last but not least, let's talk about getting OS X working on this board. Although OS X does indeed run great on the board, it takes a few steps to get everything up and running. When booting into Unibeast or a fresh installation, you'll need the CPUs equals 1 and the NPCI equals 0x3000 kernel flags. Keep in mind that you may need additional kernel flags depending on your GPU and other hardware. After getting into the OS, you'll notice that you still need that CPUs equals 1 flag. This restricts your CPU usage to only one core, which needless to say, is quite a bummer. To fix this, you'll need to copy a kernel extension named voodoo tsc sync.kext over to system, library, extensions, and then repairing the disk permissions in disk utility. Without that kext, this motherboard will restrict your CPU usage pretty drastically. As mentioned earlier, I had to edit my own DSDT to get audio working. Once the DSDT has been created, it can be installed using Multibeast. Along with the DSDT, null CPU power management needs to be installed as the X79 platform doesn't have native power management. After doing those things, the board will work great with OS X. It's obviously not the most out of the box solution, but at the end of the day, I feel that it's worth the extra work. My final thoughts on the P9 X79 Pro? It's a great board that runs well, but requires some extra steps to get fully working. This will bother some more than others, but for those that don't mind the couple of extra steps, I feel that this is a great motherboard and comes in at a very competitive price range. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the P9 X79 Pro from ASUS down in the comments. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys in my next video.